This interview's really gone off the rails. And yeah, this is a disaster. <laughs> Welcome to Tipsy Talk with Taika Waititi. Well, hello. Welcome to Tipsy Talk. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. We've kind of already started, as yeah. you can see. I start, well, what's the time now? It's 12 o'clock. Mm-hmm. I uh, started... At nine, I think. You're trying to trick yourself into thinking you're hungover, you were saying? Yeah, um, because I think that your body is not as used to jet lag as it is to being hungover. Yeah. And so when you get, so whenever I get somewhere after a long flight, I just trick, try and trick my body into, um, into, into being hungover. So I go as late as possible, and it sort of resets everything. It didn't work this time. Did it not work? No. Are you just drinking too? <laughs> yeah. Now? Is that what's happening? Cool. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Are you doing some kind of sock promotion? Sock promotion for my sock company, (laughs) these little swimmers. You've just come from Australia where you were doing a press tour. Yep. For Thor Ragnarok, which is why we're here. Thor Ragnarok, yeah. Let's be honest, you've done a film. Did a film. Did a film. Did a movie. Yeah. Chris Hemsworth. Jeff Goldblum, a couple of lads. Yeah, they're in it. How was that? Yeah, it was good. It was good. (laughs) No, No one came on this press tour except for Jeff Goldblum. Um, oh. Where's he? Well, you, you get to stay here and get drunk, so... Well, that's right. That's no, I said to you, this is actually... I couldn't think of a better way to, to, <laughs> to promote a film. I will talk about the film a bit. Oh, you I will? Feel, I feel responsible. I'm here now and I feel responsible I for, like... I suppose I have a job to Saying do. some good... Yeah, we have jobs to do. Let's get that out of the way. Okay. And then we can just get hammered. Oh, the movie's really good. You should go see it. I love that you brought so much comedy to it. I'm sure everybody is saying this to you. It is nice in an age where some people are taking superhero movies so seriously. I remember going to the movie as a kid and going to see Ghostbusters or you know or, or Goonies and just f- feeling so elated when I left the cinema yeah. and smiling and just feeling so good about life and now you drive past cinemas and everyone's depressed when they come out <laughs> life's horrible and depressing and and I just went and watched a two and a half hour movie reminding me that life is horrible and depressing yeah. I don't want to go and see that stuff at the moment do you never do you, do you, I do, do you ever I do. Sort of I mean, sometimes you get screeners. When you're an A-list. They send you DVDs, which is fucking pointless because nobody has a DVD <laughs> class anymore. Or if it's something right. cinematic, you know, they feel like you've really got to see this on the big screen. Which I feel like you should probably see all films on the big screen. But I some like of them, to. I wait until they get on the airplane. I'm not great with horror films, so I'd rather watch them at home in daylight than in a, like, dark environment. But, horror um, films are probably the last sort of, uh, in, in the genres that I would run to go and see though Get Out was my favourite um, film of, of last year I love Amazing. that something like that is going to probably be an Oscar contender yeah that's really fun also saw Shape of Water last week I interviewed oh. Guillermo del Toro afterwards it? For it. oh it's so beautiful it's awesome. so good awesome. and I think Sally's up for an Oscar and may win it like it's just yeah it's lovely uh, it's awesome. really really good and it was interesting because I was talking to Guillermo del Toro about how horror is sort of in his DNA so he doesn't need to watch horror films and learn horror yeah. he sort of his brings other is, genres um, is, is yours so is comedy well, mine is comedy. Well, I thought, what's our point of difference with um, all the other superhero movies that are full of action and amazing things? Oh, I know what we can do. We'll just have superheroes sitting around talking. It's a lot of fun. It looks like the old stuff I used to watch when I was a kid. It looked like Masters of the Universe. Yeah, Flash Gordon. It's quite camp. It's quite colourful. It's camp. really fun. Yeah, it's um, camp chic. Camp chic. Is that yeah. what you called it on set? <laughs> yeah, camp chic. <laughs> Super Kent. Well, that's something we wanted to go for the entire time, like when right from the beginning, was the um, just a departure from what I think was the trend at, at the time, and probably still is, is just like you know desaturated you know superhero movies, mm. a lot of handheld camera work and stuff. Basically, look at the other two films that had come before, yeah, and just then just start and then forget about them, and then like just make our own version. Oh, that but the, the play and the you know the play within the film. The play that, within the film was really funny. Play within the film. Which is in which um, Loki has written a play about his death and the death scene shot for shot this go, comes from um, from Dark World from Thor 2 and that really was us saying to the audience that's, that's how that's we it. view that goodbye to that yeah now. although I really respect those movies we're kind of mocking that in, in a yeah. way or just sort of saying that's as far as we're gonna take it um, from those other films. But the cameos in that scene. Cameos are awesome. They broke me. I almost don't want to say because I kind of want people you to see yeah, them for themselves. But when you see the people who are playing the characters yeah. in Thor in the play, God, it's so meta. Um, it's it very is, good. it is. It broke us all. We already had a great right. Awesome, <laughs> great. Right. Who was your favourite superhero growing up? I loved the New Mutants. Which oh, were those okay. young X-Men. Yeah. I liked the Brazilian character, Sunspot. I don't know, maybe just because he was brown. I really identified well, you do him. do that though because yeah. growing up you know I tried to find the woman and everything so it was Princess Leia and it was Ripley yeah, and trying to find someone up, you can kind of relate find, to yeah and for me probably the same as just trying to find brown people I'm getting, I'm getting through this 
You really are, I can't keep up. It's like a midday and I haven't had breakfast, it's a lot. I'm gonna ask a question. How are you? I'm gonna answer that question. Do it. I want you to understand that this is the best I've been. Oh, well that's sweet. Everything up until now was a dress rehearsal. For this? For this. <laughs> and I'm everything... not talking about the last two days of press. No, I'm the universe. Everything. The Big Bang. Even before me. Wow. It's a really good thought, isn't it? It's like everything is preparing yeah. us for this moment. Oh, Shut up. Stop doing crime. I like when you go on Twitter and two things in the thread in your news feed will have some sort of really Relation. cool relationship yeah. and they don't know each other no. and they're not related really to, they're not, aren't they not replying to each other? Yeah, I think the same as in Instagram, which is a social media site for photos. You may know it. Um, very rarely does it happen. You'll see two pictures that you could take and stick together and they would make another picture. Like the top half of the, the torso and yeah, the butt, but yeah. no one takes, but no one but, takes but that, pictures but that just kind of their thing. pants. Maybe I'll just do that now. Because usually everyone's like yeah. selfie from here. Yeah. So I'll just do a photo from here down. down. Post it. Do you think it relies a lot um, on on seeing the other films? No. So I wonder sometimes if people understand what you know, the, the rainbow bridge and all that sort of stuff is. It doesn't really matter, does it? You sort of just, just go sort of, with it, don't yeah. you, though? I know everybody's motivations. He just wants to get home. She just wants her thrown back. You feel you're in good hands, is that what you're saying? I felt like I was in very professional Confident talented, hands. confident. You're in the hands of a confident hands. filmmaker. Yes, that's what I who, felt like. Uh, you, would, you'd, he'd, he'd just scooped you up, yeah. like a little duckling, and said, "Don't you worry, yeah. you just come with me." I know this is going to seem like a, you know, a ludicrous movie mm -hmm. with you know the Incredible Hulk, a space Viking, yeah. a giant wolf, a zombie army. Yeah. It's Rock Man, a woman with antlers, um, a guy with bendy horns, Anthony Hopkins, and uh, a Rastafari. <laughs> Anthony Hopkins just gets to be Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> that's like Hopkins. Okay. <laughs> I did, I felt safe. And he's like, oh, don't I, felt safe. I felt it's like gonna, someone was like, I've got you. It's all gonna, You're all right. It's all gonna be all right at yeah. the end. It, that's what's really funny about it, is it's kind of just like a family drama. <laughs> but with all that shit going on. <laughs> it is a family drama. It kind of is. This film is really, if you look at it, it's an independent film mm -hmm. about a guy who's just trying to get home because there's a burglar in his house. And he's stuck with this giant bipolar guy who gets angry all the time and a drunk chick and an annoying brother. And that's... That's but it, it. That, it is. But it could be a road trip movie, but with, with spaceships. spaceships. Yeah. And Jeff Goldblum. And, Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> and Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm just gonna get you more. How long do we have? Nobody's telling me to stop, so I'm just gonna keep talking. Well, that's how I live my life. <laughs> this is the most drunk anyone's been willing to get in one of these. This is oh, great. Oh, I've been fucking smashed. It's good. Brilliant. Crack on. Um, what were we talking about? Uh, Anthony, Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. How is that? Tony. Tony, my mate, my man. Tony Hopkins is I fiction like cool. T Dog. Hopper. The T bomb. T Hop. Did you have to be very like reverent or anything? Did you did you have to be very serious? Cause I was at yeah, at first. Yeah. At first. But he's good. He, he he was very nice to me and he said, Oh look, this is all bullshit, you know, Hollywood and acting and all these so you just gotta said yeah, so, yeah. We're all very lucky to be doing this. Yeah, just pretending for a job. Not that there's no skill to it, obviously there is. Do you think it's all is. bullshit? Because I get the vibe that you kind of think it's all I think all with someone who's won you know, some Oscars and has you know, revered the world over for his craft, probably will say something like, ah, it's nothing, it's easy. Is it easier to dismiss it? Because it's a lot, like you're sort of I in this easy bubble to... where everyone's like, oh, it's not your idea, oh my God. Like, is it, is it a lot? Is it easy? I don't know, I, uh, I feel like it's, I feel like, no, it's very hard making mm. these films. Very oh, hard. Of course. I'm going to say that because I don't want everyone to, you know, to get into it. Um, Reduce the competition. Yeah. Nice. Or oh, you wouldn't want to do this for a job. No, God, very hard. No, very I hard. Do this. No. What's really stupid of me is that I'm a writer director and I've had you here and I've like not picked your brains about that. We've just talked crap. I feel like I should get advice from you. AMA. Ask me anything. Oh, I asked you last night about how involved you were with the script. Mm. That's really interesting. I tiptoed around that, didn't I? You did, and I wondered why. Because I, I, cause well, I, I recently a, just directed a, something that I didn't write, but I did have a hand in the script, but I'm not credited as a writer, which is fine. Yeah. But I wonder how much I'm starting to learn more and more how much a director does have influence over the script, but isn't always credited with that. Well, I don't really know other directors, but uh, for me, I usually have like a lot of influence over it. Mm -hmm. um, because even if you, you know, I knew early on I wasn't going to be credited, but 
that's and that's fine. I actually would prefer just to direct because writing such a lonely, long job and it just takes too long. So we, we had a great writer, Eric Pearson, and there were some other writers as well before him, who um, who did a great script. And you, you know, I just worked from that, mm -hmm. and then you know, did my own versions of the of the scenes and things like that. I don't mind. I feel I feel like it's all in in the service of the best story possible. And you can't limit yourself while you're shooting and tell her, well, I'm not going to yeah. give you this idea or this joke if, you know, if I don't get a credit for it. Well, yeah, because you just want to tell the best story that you can There should be a joke tell. section in the credits. This joke by, this there joke should. by. Because I think jokes are really important. Jokes are very and important. the only thing that people talk about after the movie. I'm going to tell you a thing. Okay, I'm listening. <laughs> As I sip. Sip no. away. That scene on the bridge, when you play the music, Led Zeppelin, I cried. Jimmy Page. I actually cried a Robert. bit. Robert. Just because the music was cool, and they were fucking superheroes, and they were doing their thing, and they were on a bridge. And and isn't that like, song perfect for that it's thing? It's so perfect. It's so it's good. Just, uh, it was in a picture I did when I was pitching on the film. Uh, I went in and um, made, cut together like a little video mm -hmm. of all scenes from favorite movies, and yeah, try to sort of pitch the tone of, of the film and put that, that song in. And um, uh, those guys at Marvel were like, that's a cool song, who did that? So cool. <laughs> that's cool, who, who was that? Yeah. Some obscure little band? Some British band. Someone we've never heard of? Okay, I feel like I'm probably, yeah, I probably need to wrap this up. Are, you getting, are we getting wrapped up? We're getting wrapped up. I'm gonna ask I'm one barely, final question. I've barely finished my drinks. Well, knock, <laughs> knock it back. <laughs> drinks, I've plural. barely finished my drinks. Do you have to do another interview after this? Yeah. Brilliant. Final this, question. Okay. What makes a great story? <laughs> cool title page. Is okay. The main thing. <laughs> you put a lot of effort into the title page and you use felt pens, and you do block letters, and you put crack. If whatever the title is, you make it look like it's made of rock and will marble with cracks in it. Okay. So Thor, and you might put little cracks like Word in Art, it. like Microsoft Word. No, you used to do it by hand. With, you know, oh, with you pencil. draw the yeah, title page. Yeah, and you colour that in with felt pens. Okay. Cool poster and cool trailer. I don't really know much about. Um, story other than what I feel like might be interesting. Basically when I write, I write something and I go, oh I'm bored now, and then I go, oh, maybe they just go to uh, a school, and then I go, okay, exterior school, and then sit in new scene there. Do you know that that's quite like a, like, that's just a raw talent that you have? Do you know that some people have to work like their whole lives to be able to do that? And you're it's just, just bored, like, oh fuck you it, just I'll just get bored. To yeah, you just get bored. Wow. You just gotta listen to yourself, you know, am I bored? I'm the audience in this movie. Yeah. Am I bored? Yep. Change the scene. Okay. That's it. That's Tyker's film school. If that you're is. bored, change it. But don't be a writer or a director, because you don't do really those like things. It. Be an actor. Yeah. Because all you have to do is open your stupid face and have words fall out. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, we'll end it on that. I suppose. <laughs> just open your stupid Good. face. Just open your stupid face and have words fall out. That has been Tipsy Talk with Tyker. That's been Tipsy Talk. <laughs> it's been a talky tip. Yep. Yeah, and did that.